Good evening. I'm glad you're back with us online, of course, but we're glad that we're, we're gathered together and we're glad for the freedom we have in Ireland to preach the word of God and meet together and sing to his honor and glory. So trust that you came with a heart expecting to hear from God. We're going to sing our first song um, and it's uh, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know Thus saith the Lord. Amen. Let's open a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, it's good to be gathered together in your name and we thank you that we can gather together tonight to sing praises to your name and Lord, although we're not together physically, we are via the internet and we thank you for that. Thank you for the technology. I'm sure glad that we have that. It would be very nice to have it be in the lockdown without being able to do this at least. We pray now as we gather together that you would bless the singing of your word, that it might encourage us and that it may glorify you. Pray you would bless the preaching of your word. Help us uh, to understand and enable us. And we ask your blessing upon this service in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Okay, our next song is Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross, in the cross. Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross, There a Precious Fountain. Free to all, a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. <coughs>
Okay, announcements. Uh, don't forget, Bible study Wednesday, half seven. Uh, it's going to be via Skype. So if you're not on the church Skype list and you want to be come to the prayer meeting, uh, just email me, pastor at calvarybaptistcorp.com and I will add you to our uh, midweek service uh, Skype list. Uh, do uh, come Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday night. Uh, even though we're not meeting physically, it's still very, very important. And uh, um, so not just come, but come prepared with to hear from God, come prayed up, come, come with a, a heart where you're right with God and you've got everything right with God and come expecting a blessing. Don't forget, if you have tithes and offerings, please put them uh, into the church bank account. If you don't have the church IBAN number, uh, email me and I'll send it to you. It's very important uh, that you uh, do it regularly. Uh, when you get paid, just put your tithe in and, uh, and then your uh, faith promise for our missionaries. Uh, don't forget that, it's so very important. Uh, encourage you to check out the church Facebook page and uh, try to put something up encouraging every week. Maybe there's a word there that might uh, just encourage you if you're a visitor online, drop us an email. Let me know that you're uh, visiting. You can email me pastor at calvarybaptistcork.com. That's pastor at calvarybaptistcork.com. And if you need a Bible, we can email. Uh, we can email. We'll post you one. Uh, also, if uh, you want to do a Bible study, we can do one together on uh, via Skype or over the phone. But uh, just. Send us an email, let us know if there's something we can pray for you for. So uh, do uh, let us know if you're watching online. Uh, don't forget, just contact one another through the week. It's hard to be uh, all by yourself or, or just with your family. So it's good to know that the other people in the church love you. So let's send one another texts to encourage one another. Okay, our last song. Uh, simply trusting simply trusting every day trusting through a stormy way even when my faith is small trusting Jesus that is all
trusting Jesus. Let's take our Bibles and turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So we'll continue on in 2 Thessalonians. and uh, We've covered the first uh, two and a half verses. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let na no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for your precious word. I pray, Lord, that uh, you would uh, teach us and apply it to our hearts, that, uh, Lord, that even this would cause us to be uh, uh, better Christians for you, and, Lord, be more prepared to stand for your truth, we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> so continue. Our series on the man of sin, the Antichrist, and a very, very quick review, but uh, we do have to know that uh, the Antichrist comes up in the tribulation period. The tribulation period is also known as Daniel's 70th week, or the day of the Lord, or Jacob's trouble, and it's seven years uh, of um, basically tribulation, and uh, at that time, uh, God starts dealing with Israel as a nation again. And uh, you go back to Daniel chapter 9 and you have the uh, 70 weeks determined upon Daniel's people and, and, and the city Jerusalem. And those uh, were weeks of years. So 70 times 7, 490 years. And uh, it was broken up into three parts. You had the seven years where the city was being rebuilt. So that's 49 years. And then 62 uh, weeks of years until Messiah the Prince be cut off and so that will give you 69 years or 400 uh, 69 weeks or 483 years and then you have the 70th week one week left the tribulation period and that's when the Antichrist comes and we know it's a tribulation period because uh, the Bible tells us why it's so bad it's the time of Satan's wrath and it's the time of God's wrath but we are not in it today. Uh, Paul warned them, let no man deceive you by any means. He had counseled them that they were not in the tribulation period because two things had to happen. and had to be a great falling away and the man of sin had to be revealed. And that goes back to Daniel's 70th week. In Daniel chapter 9, we know when the man of sin will be revealed. He'll make a covenant with Israel at the start of the tribulation period. And uh, that will uh, show to the world who he is and, and also his nature will be shown somewhat there. Now, a lot of people have been tried to say, are we in the tribulation period? And then others want to figure out who the Antichrist is. Is the Antichrist alive today? I don't know. But, uh, you know, the Bible says he will be revealed when he makes the covenant. So he's hid now for a reason. And some people have believed different things. Even the Baptist Confession in 1689 uh, says, talks about Jesus Christ being the, the head of the church and uh, then uh, con continues on, neither can, any, can the Pope of Rome in any sense be head thereof, but instead, but is that Antichrist, the man of sin and son of perdition that exalts himself in the church against Christ and all that is called of God, whom the Lord shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So this uh, confession of Baptists called the Pope the Antichrist. The Pope, no Pope so far has been the Antichrist. Uh, so they're wrong. Uh, and, and this Baptist group were very wrong because they tried to say who the Antichrist was be before he was revealed and it proved they were wrong. As a young Christian, I got very interested in this uh, study about uh, who the Antichrist is and, and uh, all and who might fit the Antichrist and all kinds of people's names were put forward and I would look at them and I would start to learn about the Bilderbergers. At that time, it was a, bil a, a, a secret to society and uh, I looked at all the people that 
not all, I looked at a number of groups that wanted a one world government and, and uh, I got all entangled in all this trying to figure out things but I was wasting my time because all I should have done is been studying what the Bible says. It, it's going to be clear that God has the Antichrist hid till he is revealed and we know that he is revealed at the signing of the covenant with Israel. So let's go back to our text verse. Second uh, Thessalonians 2 verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come. Except there come a falling away first. And the man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. So we saw the uh, last week how the man of sin was revealed. And now we're going to look at it. He's called another name. He's called the. Uh, the son of perdition. Now, I would suspect a lot of people uh, don't know what in the world does the word perdition mean. Well, it occurs eight times in our Bible, and uh, each case it denotes the final state of ruin and punishment, uh, which forms the opposite of salvation. The son of perdition was name given to Judas in John, and it named the Antichrist in our our, our uh, text and uh, let me quote this this is a well-known hebrew idiom by which a person typically embodying a certain trait or character or destiny is called by that thing so uh he's called uh, the son of perdition because he, he, he of, of his traits wicked and that's where he's going hell so a uh, hell uh, uh, and everlasting punishment in a lake of fire is is, is where the antichrist is going to end up the Bible says in, in Revelation 17, verse 8, verse 8, And the beast that thou sawest is, was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. That's his end, end result, destruction and everlasting fire. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is and then revelation 17 verse 11 and the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and goeth into perdition okay so uh, everlasting destruction now both judas and um and the antichrist are called the son of perdition because they're both indwelt by satan jesus in his high heat priestly prayer in, in, in John 17 says, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. And those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So the scripture was fulfilled uh, uh, that uh, the son of perdition, uh, one of the, the, um, the apostles would turn on Jesus Christ. And uh, we know that Satan actually indwelt Judas. Satan is not omnipresent, so he literally, for a period of time, dwelt in Satan. The Bible says in Luke 23, 22, verse 3, Then Satan entered into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of twelve. And so Satan uh, just... Uh, indwelt uh, uh, Judas to, to, to help him to be more wicked, just hard to imagine. And the Bible tells us when Judas died, he went to his own place. And in Acts chapter 1, uh, under the leading of God, they're going to get a, uh, another apostle to replace Judas because he lost his, his, his apostleship. Um, and so in Acts 1.25, it talks about it and says that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell. And then it says something very interesting, that he might go to his own place. Well, we know where Judas died, sorry, where he went when he died, he went to hell. And we also know that hell was created for Satan and the fallen angels. Uh, Matthew tells us that, Matthew 25 verse 41, then shall he say also unto them that are left on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels so uh when when um 
Judas died, he went to hell, and, and the Bible says it was his own place. Why? Because it was prepared for him. Because he, he was so connected with Satan. He's a son of perdition. So Judas' own place is hell. Is hell. And that's because he was indwelt by Satan. And uh, he, you know, uh, he was indwelt by Satan to, so Satan could actually help him uh, deliver Jesus to be crucified and uh, it makes a lot of sense because and Judas would have seen all those miracles and known the power of God and, and the power of the uh, God the Son on earth and so without Satan indwelling him he probably wouldn't have been too afraid of Jesus power to actually do that dastardly deed uh, but Satan empowered him to do it understand this Judas had a choice and Judas <clears throat> excuse me chose to do wrong it was prophesied that uh, he would do that but it didn't have to be him he ha he made that choice and he suffered the consequences think about this Judas spent three and a half years with Jesus Christ yet his pride and his greed kept him from being a true follower of of Jesus Christ and no one knew what he was but he and God uh, the other apostles didn't think oh Judas is, is a uh, <clears throat> Judas is a uh, a false apostle they had no idea as a matter of fact they trusted him so much that he, he's the guy that kept the money I mean if, if you knew somebody was evil you certainly uh, wouldn't uh, leave their mo your money with them but they did and so think about this Judas looked right acted right listened to the word of God but yet was hard in his heart do you know what every time you hear the word of God it should change you it should convict you and bring you closer to God but every time Joe uh, Judah Judas, excuse me, every time Judas heard the word of God, you know what he did? He hardened his heart. He said, I don't care. And he got harder and harder. And he got so hard that he delivered Jesus Christ to be crucified. Think about that. When you sit under the word of God and the preaching of the word of God, what is your reaction? Do you blame the preacher if he preaches on a sin that you've committed? He's picking on me? Do you say, well, it doesn't really matter. I'm, it's only a small sin. Do you think, well, I'll get that right some other time? These are all things that people do. Uh, I remember we had uh, visitors in church and we had a fella give his testimony uh, from fellow from Canada Norm Robinson and talked to how he, he cursed so bad before he was saved and the lady visiting the church thought that I had put him up to saying that I hadn't put him up to saying anything like that he just gave his testimony but she thought it was, it was for her and that's happened many to I suppose most of us have thought that at one time or another if you get convicted get it right don't be like Judas don't get harder and harder and harder because you won't believe how far you can fall. So you're either getting softer and closer to God or you're getting harder. And every time Judas heard the preaching of the word of God, he got harder and harder and harder. And what a very, very sad heart thought. Very, very sad that a heart could get so hard. So consider that, the son of perdition. Now, both Judas and the Antichrist are sons of perditions. Let me read you this quote. I think I, I didn't write down who I got it from, but I think it was from Clarence Larkin. Judas and Antichrist are the sons of perdition in a special sense, for they are the sons of the author of perdition, the devil. That is, they are not merely obsessed or controlled by the devil. The devil has incarnated himself in them, and for the time being, to all practical purposes, they are the very devil himself. I thought that was very well explained it. So the Antichrist will be the son 
of perdition because he is indwelt by Satan. And just as Satan uh, uh, empowered Judas to portray Jesus Christ, Satan will empower the Antichrist to do many, many things wicked things. In Daniel chapter 9, sorry, Daniel chapter 8 verse 24, he says, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and holy people. Did you catch that? But not by his own power. The Antichrist will work by the power of of Satan. We're, we're going to go verse through verse through this chapter here, but in verses 8 and 9, it, or sorry, 9 and 10, it says, uh, uh, verse 8 to 10, sorry, and then shall that wicked be revealed. Remember, the wicked Antichrist going to be revealed. The son of perdition uh, uh, is going to be revealed by the, the covenant that he signs. Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this cause God shall bring them, uh, send them strong delusion that they sh should believe a lie. So, uh, the Antichrist is coming after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Satan is the second. God is, is, is the most powerful being, I'll call him a being, uh, in, 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 in the universe. But Satan is the next. And Satan is far, uh, far smarter than, than all the men of the world put together. And he is going to empower this Antichrist. And he's going to give him power to do miracles. And, and because he's indwelt, say, uh, the, the Antichrist is indwelt by Satan, he is the son of perdition. And I'm not going to go through the miracles that, uh, that he will do at this time, but uh, we'll, we'll see that. And even later in this chapter, uh, notice it. we saw in our text verse... Uh, the man of sin, he's called the son of perdition, but he's also called in verse eight. Uh, and then shall that wicked be revealed. The man of sin, the son of perdition, the that wicked, gives us a very clear picture of this man, a wicked man of sin uh, that's going to go go to hell, and uh, it's kind of scary. Now, although Satan is going to be, uh, the Antichrist is going to be revealed by um, the covenant that he makes, you know what people are going to do? Nothing. The Bible tells about it, but the people won't care. He is the son of perdition. He, he's the wicked, the man of sin, and people won't care at all. He, he'll come uh, looking like a lion, but sp uh, sorry, looking like a lamb, but speaking like a dragon. Uh, Revelation 13, 11, and, and I, Beheld another beast come up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now, I'm not going to go into in detail, but in Revelation 6, we see him coming on a white horse. And I saw, behold, a white horse, and him that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. He went forth conquering and to conquer. Notice, it's a horse. Uh, the Jews used horses for battle. Uh, you know, if you read, they, they used uh, donkeys and, 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 and uh, for riding on, but the horses generally were for battle. So this man comes for battle, but he comes on a white horse. White is generally known as a type of uh, a color of peace, or but he comes peacefully, and he's got a bow, but he doesn't have any arrows because that's how he comes. He comes peaceably to conquer, and uh, people will just like him. They'll think, I like this guy. He's okay. The Bible says that he's going to conquer by flatteries. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 21, And in his state shall stand up a vile person whom they shall not give the honor, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. So Satan is going to indwell this man He's going to be the son of perdition. And you know what? 
people are going to follow him. It'll be clear that he is the man of sin. It'll be clear he's the son of perdition. He'll be, it'll be clear he's that wicked. But people won't care because they don't love the Lord. You know, it's just such a sad thing when you, when you study out uh, the tribulation period and the Antichrist and, because what we see is, is that uh, people are more interested in what they can get than, than who they are. They're more interested in, 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 in uh, the things of the life than the things of eternal life. And uh, so we have this man of sin coming the son of perdition, that wicked one. And he will come. And he's going to come, and he's going to come with deceivableness and lead people astray. The only thing that's going to keep people today from going astray is to know the Word of God. Uh, why am I studying these things out? Because, you know, there's some people out there, even on the internet today, and uh, the internet has got so, it's just full, full of, of false teachers. And um, you say, well, pastor, you're preaching on the internet. Yes, I am preaching on the internet, but I'm not an internet preacher. And I'm telling you, uh, if you're listening and you don't go to a, a local church, go to a good local Bible-believing church. Bible preaching, independent Baptist church, find one and go there and where you can be taught the word of God. Uh, you see, the, the, these uh, false preachers on the, uh, on the internet, they, they, they are very skilled in their, in, in their ways and uh, they're practiced and, and they've got a few pat things that they say that look right but are deceiving. And that's exactly how Satan works. Uh, Although um, the Antichrist and Judas are sons of perdition, there's many out there that are doing the work of Satan. They're uh, false teachers. And, and the Bible tells us that they come as ministers of righteousness. They, they look like they're good people. They look like they're good, but they're bad. And Judas had everybody fooled. He looked good, but he was bad. And so just a word of warning for, for, uh, for each one of us. Realize that there's teachers out there that look good, but are bad. We need to compare everything with the word of God. And uh, that's why I'm teaching verse by verse through this so that you can learn and grow. Um, so we don't know who that uh, son of perdition is today uh, because he's not revealed. And so uh, there's people out there on the internet saying that we're in the tribulation period. No, we're not. Bible's very clear. So if somebody is teaching false doctrine, don't go back and listen to them anymore. Uh, it amazes me that people will listen to this person and, and um, they'll see he's wrong, but then you'll go back. Uh, you know, I've, uh, uh, there's so many of these false teachers out there. So we have uh, the, the man of sin, uh, he's uh, the son of perdition <clears throat> and uh, he's going to be revealed and we know that the Antichrist is the son of perdition indwelt by Satan do we know who he is today no we don't because he has not been revealed yet so hopefully this will help you to stand firm in the Word of God to, to realize that God has revealed things to us so that we don't have to get all mixed up to be thinking this, that, the other. It's very clear in the word of God. So we are not in the tribulation period. We've already seen because there's been no falling away, because the man of sin hasn't been revealed, because the covenant with Israel hasn't been signed. I am not looking for a tribulation period. I'm looking for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to come and to take me home with him. And that's what Paul had told us. Uh, he, he had comforted them. He says, I, verse 1, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. We are not in the tribulation period. 
It can't be because we've not been raptured. It can't be because the, uh, the Antichrist hasn't signed the covenant with Israel. So don't get so caught up in, 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 in um, um, these things. Realize that, that God has it all under control. He's going to look after us. And I don't have to be all caught up in, in all these things about the tribulation period and what's going to happen and everything because God's going to look after us. So hopefully that will encourage you. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I do pray, Lord, I think of Judas and uh, how he heard your word day in and day out for three and a half years, hardened his heart and went away from you. And Lord, there could be some even listening tonight that sit under the preaching of the word of God, yet are not going forward and getting harder and harder and help them. Lord, I pray that you would stir them even tonight to think, oh, I don't, I don't want to end up go going the way Judas went by... Lord, I pray you would stir them and, and that they would get right today and, and Lord, that they, their hearts would be softened and they would respond to you. Thank you for showing us the things that uh, and, and how we can know it so that we don't have to be worried and, or upset. And so we commit all this to you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. See you next week.